Are you having problems grading C log or any kind of log format in DaVinci Resolve? Well, I think I have the trick for you and it's really not that complicated and your videos will look so much better. Let's get to it. All right, today we are gonna jump in. I'm gonna show you some clips that I have and how I grade C-Log 3 and how I was grading C-Log 3 wrong for so many months and finally got smart and now I, I grade it the smart way and the way I'm gonna teach you, the way of the Jared. All right, here is some ungraded video footage that I took uh, for this historic mansion that I've been working on. Also, if you haven't seen already, there's going to be a documentary that I'm producing on this and the history, and it's for fun. I'm not paid to do that. I was paid to actually shoot this house, but to do this documentary, that was me. I just went all history buff on this thing, and I was just like engulfed because it's pretty close to my neighborhood. This is a neighbor of mine, practically. So anyways, this video here is ungraded. We are in DaVinci Resolve, and if you're curious, yes, I'm using M2 Max, a MacBook. If you have a PC, well, I used to be just like you, and then I got smart. And as you can see, it combs through the footage really well on a Mac. This is actually H.265, so H.265 on a Mac just moves like butter. Even playback looks really good and smooth. Now, if it doesn't look the best, that's because it is a 60 frame per second video in a 24 frame per second uh, timeline, which is never gonna look good. So actually the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna go over and hit speed change. Now I'm bringing it down to 24 frames per second. So that would be 40%. And now you can see how smooth that looks. If you're ever wondering how people get the smoothest shots with video walkthrough, well, nobody walks that slow. That's like incredibly slow. You walk slow, but then you slow it down, down 40%, and then you get a really nice shot. And that's why a lot of people like 120 frames per second, because then they can walk a little bit faster, but 60 is good for me. Here's the trick for grading C-Log 3 and other log formats as well. Now in DaVinci Resolve, we have the node area and you can do this a couple of ways. You can go in right here and you can just place it right on. And that's what I do because I do not create a lot of nodes like other people. And then you can pick your input space and your output or your input gamma and everything like that. Now I'm going to reset the node. The other option is you can take this, you can bring it right there. And now it's part of your little node tree. Looks like a family tree, doesn't it? And right there, you can now do this as a layer. Now, if you think about it in Adobe Premiere sense, these are layers. This is the top layer, this is the next layer. We can create another layer even and bring that over, um, but we're not going to. So we'll just leave this as this. So I resetted everything again. I'm gonna bring this over and for Canon C-Log3, we are going to Go down here and I did find that their automatic gamut here, the Canon Cinema Gamut is good. And if you're not shooting in Cinema Gamut on your Canon R6 II in my case or any other Canon, um, definitely be shooting in that Cinema Gamut. Now, full disclaimer, this is my method. There's many other methods people use out there, but this is what works for me. And this is what I used to do. So pay attention because this is wrong, but this is what I used to do. And it may work for some people, but it doesn't work for me. Now, DaVinci Resolve is nice enough to have a preset of Canon C-Log3, which is pretty nice. And I used to use that all the time because I thought it did look nice. So I'll apply it, and it did. I mean, look at that. Here is the before and the after. Before, after. And you can look at the nice little waveform right here of what that does. Now, it does blow out the windows a lot more. So if you don't mind that, it's not bad. Um, and then the next thing I like to do is then go right here into the curves, which is located on the far left. So be sure to click that. 
And if you're not familiar with curves, this is the best tool out there and it will bring you such a far distance in your editing. Really, you only need three points when it comes to curves. The first one is the mid. So we're adjusting the mid tone here. And then the bottom is the shadow. So if I squish it down, it's shadow. And then the upper is highlights. And what they mean by S-curve, if you've ever heard that term, it makes a little bit of an S. So you can have a drastic S right here. And it's like that. Well, that is really ugly, isn't it? Well, let's do this. I'm going to reset this. And then I'm actually going to not pick the Canon Log 3. I'm going to go to the Rec 709. And so here's Rec 709. And now it just made it so boring, right? I can't believe how boring it is. Now, this is before, this is after. So it does change the color tone a little bit. And we applied the Rec 709. Now, let's go over to Curves. We'll hit the little mid one. I like to make my dots here. So if we need to adjust, I would say it was a little bit of a dark shot. So we will bring up the mid-tone here, bring down the shadows, um, and then highlights. So that is what we have right now. Now let's show the before, after. This is just with curves, not bad just with curves. Now we can tweak it a little bit. So I could bring up the shadows a little bit right here. And if you look over at the waveform, you can see where you're clipping and where you're not clipping. So we're staying pretty decent in the middle there. This was a darker room even this time of day. Um, and then highlights, I'm gonna bring the highlights up a little bit. And when it comes to doing interior, you gotta pick and choose. You can't have perfect windows and perfect interior, but there's a good compromise. So I can at least see some detail inside of this um, uh, window. Um, I can see the grids right there and it still shows some detail. And then it's nice and bright here. Now, what I like to do is take the contrast and just bring it up just a little bit. Now, that's what drastic looks like, but um, just a little bit also, the mid detail, I like to bring it up to around two or so. Um, it just makes it a little bit sharper on the edges. Um, and not bad. I mean, just doing that alone, I haven't even brought up saturation. So if I wanted to bring up saturation a little bit here, that's ridiculous saturation. But if we were just to bring it up a little bit, let me bring it down to close to where it was. Um, not bad. Now, C-Log 3 on Canon does give a very warm look to it, which is great for some rooms and not great for others. Now, I prefer a cooler tone, but before we do that, the white balance tool always plays a good part, and that is right here. So you pick it, find something that is white, so the ceiling is white, but you know this trim is actually pretty white. Um, so you can click that and it changed it slightly. So the white balance wasn't that off on this video. Now, I do think this looks pretty good to me here. We'll enlarge it a little bit. Um, not bad. So before, after a little detail leaves the window, but you still get a lot of that information still and the colors look good. The other thing I like to do, and I don't like to do a lot because I think less is more in a lot of cases, it gives more of a filmic look, but the gamma right here, this is a great way to start when it comes to the color correcting end of things. Um, so real quick, we can make this a little bit cooler and bring it down to the little right. Now, if I go drastic here, that's too cool, but let's bring it right there. And we'll show the before and the after. And we'll even play it a little bit right there. And as it's playing, we'll show the before and we'll turn it on after. And the noise is managed really well in C-Log 3. A lot of people may disagree with me, but I feel like it could be hidden as long as you're using specific ISOs. I have found 800, 1600, 3200, and 6400 awesome clean ISOs. Um, and there we go. And now that's what the color grading looks like. 
And that is the start. And then you can tweak it. I mean, you can start going into the uh, gain color, the, um, the offset, the lift. So that would be more like the highlight of things. Um, so you can start getting a little bit more, I don't know, not cinematic, but this is an old house. We can make it look a little bit older. But really, the gamma, make sure your white balance is set right and um, and contrast. And it's a lot of tweaking and what you feel is good. And once you are there, what I do is then I just actually copy. And if I want to apply that same look to the other shots, then just right click, paste attributes, and then make sure just color correction is on. You don't want to send all this other stuff if you don't want to change that. So just color correction and then hit apply. And then you can see in the dining room, we definitely need to adjust, but at least we have a good base now. So if we go over to the color tab here, um, I could probably bring down the mid-tones here and even the, the highlights and still get decent contrast just through the S curve. So right there. And then with the highlights, bring that down a little bit. Uh, shadows should be good and maybe a little bit more with the contrast in this room and not bad. And then let's take the white balance little tool. And that is way too cold. Um, let's actually hit, let's look at the wall there. And then we can warm it up a little bit in the gamma. So we'll bring it back up a little bit and this was a little bit cooler of a room so a lot of sun was coming into this room so you almost want to bring in that little that orange yellow look to it um, and that is what that looks like right there so not bad so that's it that is how you grade c log 3 and other log out there you may want to just use the rec 709 and not necessarily the presets that DaVinci has, but play around with it. I do find the DGI preset that DaVinci has does work really well, so I don't use Rec. 709 always on that. But let me know if this was helpful. If it was, hit that like button, and if you haven't already, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, and this is the time to watch those videos because you are so sad this video is over, but you got those, so check them out.